Good morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, everybody, depending on where you're joining us from. I'm Ben, the co-founder of Holden Qigong, and uh, here we are. We're watching people filter into the room. Wanted to uh, encourage everybody to jump in the chat room and say hello and let us all know where you're joining from. And uh, we'll get started here in just a moment or two. Oh, Nancy Hyatt, you're quick on the draw. She has got her hand raised already. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> we got Deborah coming from New York and Connie from New Jersey. We have Houston, Texas, Milwaukee, they're all going so fast. Lisa from Felton. Hey, I know Felton, that's right down the street. Little Rock, Arkansas, Frankfurt, Ontario, Colorado, Cyprus, wow, Hawaii, Poland, Northern Ireland, Princeton, New Jersey, Ireland and Greece. I'm not sure which one Thomas is in right now, but he said Ireland slash Greece. Athens, Greece, Connecticut, this is so much fun. Yeah, for those of you who are just joining, please jump in and um, when you jump in the chat room, please change the drop down to say all panelists and attendees so that everybody else can see where you're coming from too and not just myself and Lee. Vancouver, Washington, Willamette Valley, Oregon. This is great. Welcome everybody. People are still uh, filtering in, so we're gonna keep chatting for a couple minutes and we're about to go live on Facebook as well. Love from Minnesota, Santa Cruz, West Side. Hey, Jenny. Great. So give me just a moment. I'm gonna uh, get us up and running on good old Book of Faces. And uh, I believe I have what I need to do that. Uh, maybe I don't. All right, give me a moment. Zach, holler when you got that for me, okay? Yeah, I've got that right here for you. Perfect. San Jose, California, Grand Island. Welcome, 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 everybody. So uh, just going to kick it off with a little housekeeping. If you're here, then uh, welcome. I'm glad you made it onto the Zoom call. There's a couple of things that you should know. First is, <clears throat> first is if you are in the chat room, please change the drop down to say all panelists and attendees. By default, it just says panelists and then other people can't see where you're from and you can't chat with one another. I see most people are doing that now, that's great. Um, second thing is that we're gonna do some Q&A a little later, but uh, I'm gonna actually lower everybody's hands because in the past we've had a couple experiences where we said, okay, it's time for Q&A and then we started going through people who had their hands raised but they had wandered off or whatever because it had been an hour me and Lee had just been gabbing forever. And so <laughs> instead of that, we're gonna kind of start fresh with, uh, with all the hands down when it's Q&A time. Uh, the hand raising thing is something that you do by going to the panelists, I'm sorry, the participants button on the bottom of your Zoom. And then over there, uh, it'll open a panel. It's got a whole list of people and at the bottom should be a button that lets you raise your hand. And that will be uh, something I'll go over again when it's time to, uh, to jump in and do Q&A. Um, and the other thing was just that uh, for those of you who are new to this whole thing with us and uh, how we do this, basically what we're gonna do is just go through some tea time. Uh, Lee and I both are getting our tea going. So I think Lee will show you what he's got. I'll show you what I've got in terms of, of our fancy tea setups. Uh, and we'll then get Lee to lead us in some form of practice or meditation or, or getting present and go from there. So let me get us onto Facebook and we will be in great shape to get started. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There we go. Great. Yen Chan says, hello from old Blighty. I'm drinking detox tea because I ate too much chocolate. <laughs> Good job, Yen. I've been there a lot. It does happen to the best of us. Um, for those of you who are drinking tea, I think that's terrific. It's a wonderful thing to do together, even if we're not physically together. And uh, it's a great way to be present with one another. So I'm glad, glad you're doing that. Um, and uh, here we go. Cool. Oh, 
Got more than one vote for lemon ginger. <laughs> That's great. Uh, well, this well, browsers never behaved this way before. Are we live? Can someone on my team confirm that that actually worked or did it not? It did. Hi, everybody on Facebook. Welcome. Glad you could join us on Facebook. Uh, we're streaming live from our Zoom live stream for today's Tea with Lee. And uh, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Ben Cox. I am the co-founder of Holden Qigong. Uh, Lee and I have been working together for several years and created the Holden Qigong Online Academy, for lack of a better term, and have been bringing all of this wonderful uh, Qigong practice out to the broader world for several years now. And uh, <clears throat> we're so glad that you all could join us. And we're so glad that, uh, that we can help during this insane time. Uh, frankly, I'm personally very glad that uh, what we're dealing with in our generation who didn't have a Vietnam and didn't have a World War II and didn't have a polio and didn't have a, I mean, we've been very lucky in my opinion. And so uh, may this be the big thing that's most disruptive and not some kind of giant war. That's my hope for, for the world. And because this is what's going on and people are at home um, and getting the benefit of a lot more free time, we're so pleased that we can start to build more community with you now. And it's been something that's been on our list for a long time. And we're finally uh, doing it now. And this has sort of pushed us into doing it sooner than we were ready, but this has been great. And frankly, I can speak for myself. I've been really touched by all of you in the community showing up, participating, and really starting to have a, more, of a, more of a connection, a real-time connection with you all. So thank you so much for joining us from the bottom of my heart. And we're getting started. Lee, how are you, man? Hey, I'm good. Thanks for that, Ben. Um, yeah, it's crazy times out there. And um, so nice for us all to get together and have some tea and chat and talk about uh, important things and yeah. uh, help it to support each other to feel better and distill the lessons and the wisdom that we can, you know, it's like, it's like looking for buried treasure sometimes these these challenging times we can we can really excavate some precious precious gems even though it's you know we're getting our hands dirty and it's challenging so uh let's have some tea sounds good to me yeah um had a couple of people i think just popping in and so if you're just popping into the zoom please set your zoom chat to all panelists and attendees instead of just the default which is all panelists and uh, I see Lee is moving by in the background, Lee Sr. Yeah, there's big Lee there. We got, hey. a, we got a crew here. Uh, so let me just show you what we got. Yeah, let's see. We got big Lee. Big Lee. Hey, it's me on the big Lee screen. <laughs> How you been, How's man? that for a quantum world? <laughs> that's, uh, for those of you who don't know my dad, that's Judge H. Lee Holden. And then Karen Holden right here. Okay. Silhouetted. Mom. Yeah. Mom was a fitness teacher, yoga instructor for many years. So, you know, what I always say is nobody really knows this, but when you combine a judge and a yoga teacher, you get Qigong. <laughs> so that's just how it works. Then you throw this guy into the mix. Mm -hmm. He's meditating on the back of a chair. Hey, dude, sure. we're live. <laughs> Looking at the ocean. He, he's a... Uh, the most Buddhist dog ever, because most uh, days he spends about, you know, 16 hours in med deep meditation. Yeah, it's pretty good gig if you can get it. Yeah, so that's, we're gonna pour some tea for all the, this crew right here. Great, what are you drinking today? I am drinking uh, 7572, and this is a little pot that I love because I got it in um, China, but it has the hole on the top. Mm -hmm. So I can pour tea right into the top without having to lift the lid, how, how cool is that? That's not as cool as your teapot or your kettle. Well, my kettle, right? Look at that kettle. Next level kettle right there. Yeah. That was a nice uh, Christmas present this year. So that was the rinse. So we rinsed the tea first, as Ben was talking about last time. And this tea, the pu'er tea is a wonderful uh, ceremony. And uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm rinsing the tea and then I'm going to pour it onto the top of the pot. And what I love about this little ceremony, you can you know, bless the little figures that are here. I've got a little frog. 
he represents abundance and fortune. And, you know, we make him kind of a mess with the tea because you're spilling it all over the place. And it's representative of the abundance of nature and the universe. Mm -hmm. And so as you're drinking your tea, remember that nature is abundant. Uh, the blessings are there when we can tune into them. And as we were saying before, excavate the teachings and the, and the gems. So after the rinse, I'm going to pour the tea, the hot water into the teapot again. And then this is the one we're going to be drinking. Mm -hmm. I, I do have some interesting cups. Uh, this one in particular has two little fish inside of it. So when you're drinking the tea and the water moves, it looks like the fish are swimming. So cool. And this little cup, my daughter's favorite, because when you drink out of it, it whistles. <laughs> so you can just have fun with your tea ceremony and you don't have to drink, you don't have to drink it out of anything in particular. You can just grab a chunk of puer or any kind of tea and uh, ritualize it, make it a med mindfulness practice. And uh, it's a great way to start the day or really any time during the day. Um, right. And I'll take people through a little tea meditation uh, when we're ready. Great. Yeah, once we get things going, we're almost there. You got to do the rinse. I got to do my rinse. Yeah, somebody was on the, uh, the live subscriber class. So we've been teaching our subscription classes live over Zoom, but feeding Zoom our, our multi-camera studio with the nice audio and so on and so forth. So it's been pretty great. And, uh, and, and we made it possible for Lee to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with Zoom participants from, from our studio stage. So he's been doing Q&As for subscribers before the class. But yesterday during the class, somebody, uh, somebody a fellow named Dustin posted in the chat. He's like, you know, Ben, I really enjoyed watching that whole Gong Fu ceremony and it was pretty inspiring. But now I think I'm sliding down into a very expensive rat hole. <laughs> it's like, it can be that way for sure. I have spent uh, a lot of money on tea wares. And, and once you get into antique tea wares, then it gets crazy. But it also can be uh, very, very inexpensive. And you know, when you when you buy these hundred or hundred fifty dollar bricks of tea, you think it's a lot of money to spend. But when you put it up next against a couple of bottles of wine that are gone, you know, in a couple of evenings, it's not that expensive. And and when you realize that you put about three four dollars worth of tea in a pot and you steep it twenty five times throughout the day, it's cheaper than most people's latte habits, and and kind of gets you this whole whole day of like life in relationship with tea. So that's something that, uh, that I realized that maybe I didn't stress very much um, during our previous sessions. Today, I'm drinking something that I think uh, you will be a little bit envious of there, Lee. I'm drinking some Ponch and Llama. Here's my, uh, my backyard. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's a nice tea. Isn't that, that's a tea from the 1980s, right? Yeah, that's right. And I'm drinking it out of a gaiwan instead of a teapot today, which is a little bit of a different system. It's a, a lidded cup or a lidded bowl. And so the lid uh, allows you to strain it. And it's got a little saucer here so you can pick it up without burning your hands. Although true gong fu is when you pick it up like this, even though the gaiwan is hot. And um, so I've got a pitcher. And normally, if I'm serving other people, I'll have multiple of these cups, just like you saw on Lee's table. He had a little glass pitcher and multiple cups. And I'm doing exactly the same thing, but for myself today, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna strain the tea leaves as they come out of the gaiwan with this little um, strainer. It's a clay with a piece of silk in the bottom here. And uh, here we go, so I'll do my rinse. I love the steam. So one of the wonderful things about tea is that it really is a five elements practice in and of itself. You know, I'm, the way that I, you know, I've got the wood of the table and the tea tools, and we have the, the minerals, uh, the metal element in the clay and in the gaiwan in the glass. And we have the water element, of course. And we have the fire element in the, the heat for the water. It used to be until recent times in order to make tea, and not blast out your tea guests' noses, you had to learn how to make a fire without any smoke. So that was hard in and of itself. Just making tea was so hard. So uh, the fire element in there, and then of course the earth element with these little clay figurines that we have on the table, and um, the wood element is the tea itself. So we've got all these different components 
that make up really kind of a full five elements experience. Um, it's one of the things that I absolutely love about it. So here we go. Uh, that first one came out very light, as you can see, because these leaves are very, very uh, old. They are 40 years old, probably approaching. And so they need waking up. So that first rinse is such a beautiful yellow color. And I give my friends some love. Got a new one on the table today. This little mythical uh, dragon creature. Uh, it's like a cross between a, a foo dog and a dragon from China. My girlfriend gave it to me. And here we go. Oh, and I'm using the, the rinse to warm the cup. That's another thing that's uh, a wonderful part of the ritual. The ritual actually evolved from the fact that everything was poisonous unless you poured boiling water on it. So to show your guests that everything was clean, a more formalized version of the ritual, you spend all this time with boiling water, cleaning all the cups one by one and cleaning everything. And then, uh, and then finally serving the tea. So we do a slightly more casual version. And give this guy a little more love. And away we go. So Lee, you have your tea, I have my tea. I'm hoping that our guests have their tea and are ready to uh, get present and do a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a tea ritual. Beautiful. All right. Well, if you don't have tea, you always have chi to drink and sip. So that's always good. You can do it that way too. Just you, you, you can sip uh, breath and that's just fine. Oh, okay. Well, let's, um, let's do, I love that, uh, Ben, how you're explaining about the five elements and, you know, five elements is a map that we talk a lot about that gives us guidelines and signposts to how to lead healthier, happier, more fulfilling life. So five elements was just one of those maps in Qigong and in Chinese medicine and Taoist theory that just helps us to, to navigate it. And when we can see how this invisible life force energy starts to take shape into form, we see the five elements. We see water and we see fire and we see wood and metal and earth. And these are this is qi, the invisible life force energy condensing down and then creating form. And, you know, we as human beings are quite obsessed with the forms of things, but really, really what we want is these forms to give us some energy, some, something, you know, we want the forms, our things in life to make us feel a certain way and feelings are energy. And so it's our job to use our things to create energy, but energy is what's most important. And we can get to the source of energy, that invisible life force energy directly directly, our relationships, the, the space between people, uh, like we're cr creating community here, we can create positive energy in a field that we all get to participate in and then elevate from. Mm. And so why don't we start, we feel the, the form, the shape of tea, but within the tea is chi. As we drink tea, the tea then delivers chi into our bodies. And it's a very direct source of energy and it's a very clear and clean source of energy. So when you're drinking tea, all of a sudden your body and your body mind system will extract the chi from the tea. And that's what we do with food as well. You know, we eat food. Why are we eating food? Your body wants energy. Why are we breathing? Your body wants energy. So everything in life comes back to life force energy and how, how skillful are we at acquiring this chi. And so tea is, is seen as a very highly a uh, very direct path to energy. When we're drinking tea, we can really, really start to feel these present moment, this present moment awareness and make it uh, ritualized so that we have some moments during our day where we're in the present moment. So just hold your tea in your hand. We'll again, bring it by our heart center. Mm -hmm. And at this particular time, it's, it's so important to take moments and tune in to what we're grateful for, uh, tuning into gratitude and joy and happiness and love and connection and just bring your attention to that heart space within you. We need to train our minds to focus and pay attention to the positive things as well. We're hardwired to pay attention to the negative 
So paying attention and cultivating positive, happy, joyful energy, or even inner peace, it takes training. And so it takes training by focusing the mind and having a cup of tea or starting the day or any time during the day where you take a moment to just be in the present moment, tune into your heart, take a breath there, bring some attention to the things in your life that you're grateful for, as simple as having this cup of tea, all of us getting together, listening to the birds singing outside your window, whatever it is, just bring some attention to those little things that make you happy and joyful. Breathe into that, feel into your heart. And then we're gonna take a sip of our tea. And as you take a sip of your tea, you're gonna follow it down into your belly. So everybody go ahead and take a sip of tea. Do so mindfully. And as you swallow the tea, feel it go down into your belly. And as it goes down, imagine that it transforms into golden light right in the center of your belly. This was called the lower dantian, which directly translated means elixir field. This field inside of you, this energy center that creates an elixir of vitality. So you feel into that area, you take a breath into it and feel the, the tea transforming into chi, into life force. And we use our mind, placing our attention in the lower abdominal center and visual, visualizing this warm golden light starting to shine through your whole inner body. Breathe into that, take a slow deep breath, feel this light shining through all your cells drawing your source of joy and happiness, inner peace and contentment from the inside out. And let's take one more sip. And that just sets us up for a beautiful conversation and a wonderful rest of our day. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, one and all. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, that was really, uh, that was delightful. Yeah, Thank I've been, uh, ever since you, you uh, taught us a couple of weeks ago, that first thing with the, the circling around the heart, uh, it's been very interesting for me because I spend a lot of time becoming present to the tea table, but taking that directly into the heart energy was uh, a nice, addition to my morning, uh, my morning process of, of becoming present. So I appreciate that. I'm very grateful for your, your teaching and everything that, uh, that you've taught us. Thanks. Yeah. Ah, wonderful. So do your, uh, do your peers over there have some tea now? Everybody yeah, they do. Join us in, the, in this yeah. ceremony. Yeah. And Charlie is totally out and he is now <laughs> in deep, deep, deep meditation face in the sunlight and, um, and so we're set. Yeah, excellent. Well, I'll tell you, uh, ever since the shelter in place happened here, um, the gradual taking away of uh, outdoor areas, uh, the beach got shut down this week, um, yeah. the parks, state parks, where normally we would be hiking out in the woods have been shut down. There are a few secretive places that will not be mentioned that we can find to go take a walk in the woods, but otherwise it's pretty sparse now. And the reason they did that is because of uh, spring break and um, all the people that were threatening to come from all over the Bay Area and beyond to uh, hang out on the beach in large numbers, I guess. That was the fear. So Lee, I know you're right by the beach. Have they shut it all down? How are they? Well, yeah, it's shut down. It is a little bit eerie because there are no surfers out in the water and I think this is the first time that there's actually been nobody in the water probably since the 1930s or 40s or something like that it's, it's a little you know funny feeling as you look out the window and walk along the beach uh, not walk along the beach we can walk along the cliff but not go down to the to the sand itself so it is it is interesting out there it's an it's a new world and I think one of the things that really helps us when there's so much change and transformation around us uh, to have a stability in your inner world and the stability in your inner practice. 
And really in, in the five elements, this is the earth center within you. To find that stability within can be extremely comforting um, because we do face the unknown all the time. It's just more apparent at this particular moment in time. And when you have that feeling of energy being connected to your center, all of a sudden we feel that stability, that grounding coming from within. And that can be extremely valuable in times of transition, both personal transition or world transitions to understand and feel, oh, I'm safe and secure, strong and balanced within myself. Um, and I have resources to draw upon that are internal. Here, here, that makes sense to me for sure. The, uh, the time that I've been the most grateful for these practices has always been when these things come out of left field and, and change everything quickly. And I find myself just being like, oh, okay. Yep, world's, world's crazy now. So be it. And, uh, and there is that eye of, the, eye of the hurricane, right? I mean, that's sort of the feeling is that no matter how uh, active the world is around you or how active you have to be, in your world, mm -hmm. that presence, that sort of, um, that connection to that internal awareness as pure awareness, as opposed to awareness of all the emotions and the feelings and so on and so forth is wonderful and really helped you weather these, uh, these dramatic changes in the world or dramatic changes in your personal life. And so for me, these practices have been instrumental in my getting through this with grace and ease. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in some ways, our world has changed less than a lot of folks. And Leah, I know you're grateful and I'm grateful that a lot of our work was online already. And we've been mastering Zoom calls in our meetings for uh, years. <laughs> so we didn't have to train our entire team to figure out how to do these meetings remotely. So we're quite grateful for that. What do you think uh, the next step is i know you and i were talking a little bit about like hey how are we going to know when to start putting retreats on the calendar how are we going to know when to start trying to have you know live stuff on the schedule that we may end up having to cancel so I don't yeah know if you have any preliminary thoughts about that i think it's just interesting how our mind loves to predict or try to predict future scenarios based on past experience and when our present moment is really uh, disorienting. It's hard to predict what's going to happen. So there's a lot of confusion. Um, and it, 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 that predictive quality of our minds is just interesting. And I think find your mind fascinating so that we don't take it too seriously because usually the thoughts in your mind aren't always in alignment with reality or what will happen. And that's okay. And to understand that our minds love to tell stories. And because the future is unknown, and it always is unknown, we're going to tell ourselves a story about it. And it often has the lens of our past experiences. So if you can step out of your past experience and tell yourself a story about the future that's life-affirming, life-enhancing, if you can imagine things that are to come that are positive for you, uh, where we're wiser, stronger, more inspired by telling ourselves a future story, your present moment gets elevated. And this is sort of the skill of working with the energy of the mind. Mm. So I think it's just interesting how we're, we're all trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And um, this particular time, it, it, it really brings out the, the clarity of how we like to, you know, tell these stories about what's going to happen and how you know, it's like planning a trip. You plan the trip and then you go on the trip. There are two very different things that happen. <laughs> One is that you can't, you know, the map is not the territory. So, and the other is that once you plan a trip, things happen that are unexpected. Even if you do exactly what you thought on your itinerary, it's still very different than you expect. So be open to surprises, be open to the unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, I think drop into the present moment. And as you start to think about the future, try to make it a meditation of inspiration because let's not forget that worrying about the future is a meditation. <laughs> Worry is a meditation where you focus on the negative because we, have, we can all concentrate 
mind energy on the things that we're worried about and the things that we don't want to happen. So if we can shift that and turn our attention to the things that we do want to happen or the lessons that we'll learn or the positive within the negative circumstance, uh, we can elevate our present moment. And really, the only thing that we really have is this present moment. And so how we skillfully work with the energy right here, right now, creates a flow that, that guides our chi and energy into the future. So there's my two cents on the, on the predictability of the, of the future. Well said, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that really is it, isn't it? We don't yeah. have a real objective future that we can point to and put our hands on. All we have is now that was once going to be the future. And then when it arrives, it's not really what you thought it was going to be, even if it's mostly what you thought it was going to be. And what I find is that the more present to this moment that I am, the more I notice the ways in which it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And yet the more I also notice the ways that those differences benefit me. I mean, the surprises often are the best part or the things that seemed like, oh no, what's this gonna do to my future? Turns out it did something better to my future <laughs> once I get there than I thought it was going to. And that's gradually trained me to be less and less concerned. I mean, mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to plan. We have to put things on the calendar or nobody will show up to them. We have to, yeah, but- Exactly. Eisenhower's quote is similar to what you said is the uh, map isn't the territory is that he said, I think it was Eisenhower said, I've always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. Mm, nice. And yeah. what I love about that is that it's a practice of being present in the process of envisioning the future and doing that now and then kind of letting go of it and then walking your way down the plan and then noticing when it, when it's changing and when it's different and being present to that without reactivity about getting freaked yeah. out. Oh, this wasn't my plan. It's a good, it's a good practice. And so yeah. hearing that. Yeah. What well, else well, would we have like questions? Share? Yeah, we have quite a few. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, share before we started? You want to take some questions and then do a little, do a little practice at the end. I'll take some questions. Let's, right. let's get to people's questions and, uh, and then we can do a little more practice at the end. And okay. um, now wonderful. So let me do a little bit of housekeeping here, folks. And for anybody who's joined us and doesn't know who I am, I'm Ben. I'm the co-founder of Holden Qigong. And Lee and I have been working closely together in business partners for many years. And, and I've kind of created all of this uh, uh, online stuff in order to bring his mission and his work and his light out to as many of you as possible. And that's why I'm here saying hello to you all now. And here in Zoom, there are a couple of features that we're using because we're using the webinar version, one of which is a Q&A button down there below things or over to the side on your phone or something. But on the, on the computer, it's down at the bottom. If you'd like to ask a question, but you don't want to necessarily come on camera and have a two-way conversation publicly with Lee, please use the Q&A uh, button down there. If you'd like to come on camera publicly with Lee, now is the time to, uh, to go ahead and hit the raise hand button, which you can find by going to the participants. And then in the panel that opens up with the big list down near the bottom, there's a raise hand uh, button. So people can do that. I see some hands going up. This is great. So let's start there and then we'll have uh, Zach do some, uh, pull us some questions from the Facebook group as well. And then we'll handle the Q and A's here in Zoom. How about that? Great. Great. Hey, Ben, do you want me to just read some of these Q&As from, from in here in Zoom and start answering? Well, that's, uh, that's totally fine. Why don't you do that? And what I'll do is I'll double check that some of these uh, hand raised people are actually ready to go. Okay, that sounds good. Great. Um, okay, so let me look, uh, this is from Julia. I know that sitting is the new smoking, but I get a little sore standing, which, it, which I do 100% uh, at, at the computer. Should I do the same exercise as one would do sitting? Yeah, I think this is a good question. Um, you know, really sitting is the new smoking really has to do with sitting for long periods of time and not moving our bodies. Um, so you can, you know, if you're sitting at the computer and doing, you know, five to eight hours without getting up, this is really where the stagnation of chi comes. So if you can get up and do two or three minutes of movement every two hours, you're going to be a lot better off, a lot better off during your day because 
you know, let's face it, people, they, they sit and drive to work, they sit at work, they come home, sit for dinner, sit and watch TV. And that is uh, a recipe for stagnant chi and all kinds of problems in our body. So if we can get up, move for five minutes every hour or two, we're in good shape. Well, these are what I call chi breaks. You just do pick an exercise, spinal cord breathing, you know, dog wags a tail. And if you don't want to stand up, you can still sit and move and keep your body moving. If, especially if you have some space, you just sit in your chair and do some seated qigong. That is not the, the sitting that they're talking about. So moving in your chair is fine um, and much better than sitting stationary. You know, often say like when we're flying on an airplane, you know, on a six hour flight or something like that, when you get off the plane, nobody's saying, oh man, I feel so relaxed, I feel so good. Everybody's stiff, tired, kind of uncomfortable from sitting for so long. And this gives us an idea of what um, energy is all about. Why is this true? Because when you look out in nature, everything in nature is in constant movement. Some things are very slow, like the way the sun moves across the sky during the day, or a moon, same with the moon or the stars, but they are moving, and the planet is moving, the water is moving. So we are in a moving universe, and it's expanding universe. Everything is swirling and orbiting and flowing. So when you sit and become stationary, it's in a way you're going against the flow of nature. So getting up and moving, you are in the flow of what's going on all around you. And that's what I love about this practice so much is that you can find stillness within movement where your flow and the energetic flow all around you is in harmony and you enter into the stillness because everything is lined up. So that was a good question. Um, Here's a good question about visualization. Somebody saying that they have a hard time visualizing when, when I take people through these Im images, you know, golden light and this, that, and the other thing, um, that she doesn't have a strong sense of visualizing, but there is a strong sense of sensing, you know? And she says, I assume that one method is as good as another as long as I'm all in, in the present moment while doing Qigong, but I'm wondering what your take is on these distinctions, sensing versus imaging. Um, and can I talk about the difference? So in Qigong, they say visualization, the imaging leads the mind, your attention. Visualization leads the mind and the mind leads the chi. So if you can just lead the chi with your mind without having to do the visualization, that's fine. And that's what you're talking about, just sensing. You just feel the energy. If you feel the energy in your lower dantian or your belly or in your hands, or you know what does golden light in your belly see? feel like that is every bit as good we aren't we aren't all visual some of us are more auditory some of us are more sensational or kinesthetic so you can just tune into the sense that works for you so if you're getting guided in a meditation and they're saying you know breathe golden light into your lungs what does that feel like or you can just imagine if you can remember sunset or uh, the feeling of warm sunlight on your body, you can use that to then send the energy to that particular area of your body. Fantastic. Um, let's see, um, somebody's asking if I'm planning a retreat in North Africa or Southern Europe. Hey, I will love to do that. Let's go to North Africa. I see some people from Morocco uh, and, and Spain. Let's, let's do that when we can. We'll do chi retreats. Well, will there be an earth workshop uh, to go along with the other four seasons? That's a great question, huh? Uh, I'm trying to remember, did we do qigong for healthy digestion? That's a very earthy. Uh, yeah, we did. Workshop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, the four seasons workshops definitely focused on uh, various aspects and they go into that particular season's element, but for physical aspects in particular, we went through a five elements workshop series that covers all five of the elements in their physical manifestations and their physical aspects in particular. So um, the low back was the, uh, I'm sorry, the healthy digestion was the earth. Yeah. And that one, so the, that exists as a bundle, but also available separately. So if you wanted to get the earth element low back workshop, I'm sorry, I keep saying that, but it's completely wrong. Uh, that's the kidneys, right? The water? Yeah, that was the kidneys. The earth element, healthy digestion. Of course, yeah. So yeah. anyway, there you go. 
<laughs> yeah, get the healthy digestion if you want the earth. Um, but otherwise, we could, you know, that would be something really great to think about and, and, and talking about the earth element in terms of grounding. The interesting thing about the earth element and its manifestation mentally and emotionally on the negative side, it's what we were talking about when we're not grounded and we don't have energy in our center, what tends to happen, the energy rises up to your head and creates a lot of thoughts. And those thoughts tend to be repetitive. They tend to be a little bit slanted towards the negative or a lot slanted towards the negative. And this is what we call worry. It's looping thoughts going around and around in sort of this direction of negativity. And so an earth element practice would be to bring the energy back down to your center. What this does is creates healthy digestion and a clear open mind. So the positive aspects of the earth element are focused thinking, clear intent, um, and present moment awareness. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting thing because those are often the results energetically of what we're talking about, you know, whether it's you know, being in the present moment, but it does take energy dropping out of the head and coming into the center. So I think that's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain to me why in Qigong you look at hands while doing the moves? Uh, yeah, you can, you can look at the hands while doing the moves, but if it's distracting, you don't have to. For me, what I like to do if my hands were moving like this is to look at my hands through my peripheral vision, but have my vision and gaze a little bit more expanded. And the reason they do that is when you look at your hands or you're paying attention to your visual consciousness, your mind is in the present moment. So for example, my hands are moving like this and I'm, my eyes are looking at my hands. Where are my hands moving? They are moving in the present moment. So if I'm paying attention to that, then my mind is present. So that's one reason. So that sometimes when you close your eyes, your mind starts wandering into the, into the worried thoughts. So if you close your eyes, which is totally fine, you want to be feeling your chi, you want to be doing visualizations that, that really help to root your mind in your interior experience. And then if you notice that your mind starts wandering, then you can open the eyes and look at the horizon, notice your hands moving with your peripheral vision or look at them directly. All is just fine. I tend to recommend that people go a little bit back and forth, close your eyes, feel what's happening in your body, open your eyes, let your eyes and your visual consciousness keep you in the present moment. Great. Sometimes I have a buzzing in my ears that lingers and occurs at different times of the day, not just when I'm doing Qigong. I assume it's Qi, but not sure if it's an imbalance. Too much Qi? These, these, these things are uh, interesting, right? Uh, now, like pain, there's, there's good pain and good, and good buzzing. And then there's bad pain and bad buzzing. The good pain would be like when someone's massaging your neck and shoulders and, and hits a sore spot and you start to massage and like, oh, that hurts so good. And the good buzzing that might happen in the ears is usually when you're feeling a lot of energy. Uh, and as I'm looking out my window right now, I'm seeing whales breaching. So that's an interesting thing. The, the affirmation of energy and nature all around us. So we've got these Blue, big yeah. whales breaching and blowing, uh, blowing water. So they're joining us too. <laughs> so buzzing that feels uncomfortable and constant, uh, you, know, you know, often they call it tinnitus or tinnitus. Um, but if it's not high pitched and, it's, and, and you're feeling energy also in the rest of your body, then it's usually nothing to worry about. Um, so tune into your felt sense inside yourself. Do I feel good? Is it my energy elevated? And then I start to heal this buzzing and electricity because everything's elevating. If, if it's when you're feeling depleted or low and you start to hear the buzzing, then we need to work on it as an imbalance and start treating the kidneys. Kidneys are associated with the ears, so we treat the kidneys for that. Um, so you might consider doing some more kidney exercises from our five elements. Speaking of kidneys, I noticed uh, J.E. Rash has asked, with all the sequestering and all the sitting, I noticed in myself and my patients and my students, there seems to be a sluggishness of kidney energy. Maybe you have some specific suggestions. You just said kidney from our five elements, but are there other specific suggestions that might be? Uh, yeah, we... because you know kidneys are the water element. So uh, again, when we look at nature, water is healthiest when it's moving. And when it's not moving, it gets stagnant, right? It pools up. And so your body is more than 70% water. 
And often the way in which they talk about the chi within you is water-like. So sitting, for example, creates this sluggishness. And unfortunately, the more you sit, the more you want to sit. And mm -hmm. the more you don't feel like moving because we don't quite have the energy. So it takes, you know, it takes some effort to, to get rid of that inertia. So I always recommend just you have a little pep talk with yourself, you know, like, hey, we're going to get up. We're going to do seven minutes of practice. And that's it. You just make a deal with yourself. I know I don't really feel like getting up, but I'm just going to do seven minutes. If you do seven minutes, it usually turns into 20. And then afterwards, you feel way better. It's very rare that people get up, move their bodies in these beautiful ways like we teach in Qigong, and then feel worse afterwards. So get up, talk yourself into, coach yourself through it. Make yourself a routine if that works for you. I got, you know, I get up every morning and I do my Qigong practice, or I get up, I have my tea, I do my Qigong, or every day after lunch, you know, hour after lunch, I'm gonna do my Qigong practice. Sometime build it into your schedule because life gets busy and your mind will trick you into thinking that you're too busy to do Qigong. Well, you are too busy not to do Qigong. We're all too busy not to do this practice because you will be more efficient, less stressed more energized when you do your practice and you'll do everything better you can try doing a little experiment with yourself do qigong one morning and then go through your day don't do qigong one morning and then go through your day and when it's really apparent is when you don't do qigong for you know a few weeks and then you come back to your practice it was like what was i thinking i feel so much better by doing this practice than if i did it so th those are kinds of things that we need to help ourselves and then use our communities to support each other to, to move into deeper layers of our practice and getting together like this and doing classes in communities and getting online at the same time with people with similar intentions and similar state of minds really helps to support us because let's face it, not everybody in the world is doing Qigong. Not everybody in the world is, is self-reflective and looking at ways to lead more fulfilling lives. So this is not part of our society yet. So we need to get together uh, because there is an energy field where people are worried and concerned and full of anxiety and we can get wrapped up into that and into the inertia of that. So by creating communities, strong communities with like-minded people, we can really help to support ourselves in our own evolution and practice. Certainly, I've certainly found that to be true, that um, having people expecting you to show or just expecting yourself to show up uh, with the community can make a huge difference. And the other thing he said, if you just say, I'm just going to do seven minutes is absolutely spot on. If, if, if you, if you have a, a, whatever the minimum is that you need to convince yourself, like I can do one minute. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed of myself if I can't do one minute. So I promise <laughs> myself I'm going to do one lousy minute every day so that I don't have to just hate myself. <laughs> and then you show up and do the one minute and it doesn't take long before it's five minutes, it's 10 minutes. It, it just sort of happens naturally because you didn't set this huge bar for yourself that you're overwhelmed by thinking about jumping over. So give yourself, you know, one, just, our seven minute, our 30 day challenge is designed for this principle. Set anybody feels like they can do seven minutes, no matter how busy they are, even if they have to cram it in at the very end of the, uh, at the end of the day, it works beautifully and it gets people going. So yeah, it's nice. One advice. Somebody in the chat room was saying, you know, a dance party after Qigong is, makes, it, makes it a lot of fun too. And sometimes you're so energized, you just can't help but dancing. And, you know, people have asked, do I, uh, can I play music? You know, at home, you can play whatever music you want. It, music is really an energetic experience, right? You put on music. What is music? A vibration. This, the vibration through the air vibrates these little bones in your head. And then we turn it into meaning. And often music is open, is elevating to our heart. So if you put on some music that you really like and you do your practice, it is part of a Qigong practice. So there's, you know, I like to have less rules about Qigong and just really listening to ourselves. I think that's a really good practice to do. Um, wonderful. Let's, let's look at some more questions. Uh, Eduardo, I started with your, your lessons and they have been amazing. They're helping me a lot to reduce anxiety, but I have a question. Can I overdo Qigong? How much should I do? I'm doing 20 minutes in the morning and evenings, but I feel I want more. This is great, Eduardo. When you feel you want more, do more. So uh, 20 minutes, 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening is great. It's fantastic. 
Um, even better, you know, 45 to an hour morning and evening is amazing. And that's where you really start to create transformation. And especially if you're working on some internal healing, you have some body issues, some health issues, we want to create a, a shift, a transformation in our energy. And it takes some time to do that. So doing a little bit more and spacing it out like that morning and evening is fantastic. Um, you can overdo Qigong in the same way you can overdo exercise. So listen to your body. We only, you know, we want to get plenty of chi, and then we also want to get plenty of rest. So I, I think, you know, if you're in really good chi shape, you know, you could do three, four hours a day, but uh, build up to that. Um, but most people can do 20 minutes morning, 20 minutes evening or 30 and 30. Uh, that is just fine. But build up to if you have the time and you're loving your practice, you know, build up to an hour, you know, maybe an hour in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening or an hour in an hour. That's that's great. I had a student who really didn't believe in Qigong and he, he his wife talked him into doing the practice. And he said, you know, what? I'm going to do it for three weeks. I'm going full in. He didn't feel Qi at all for a week. He didn't believe in the practice. He didn't even believe what Qi was. He was a medical professional, very scientifically oriented. And then all of a sudden, about 10 days into it, he was like, oh, and he looked at his hands and he's like, I feel it. I, oh my God, it's, it's real. And about a week later, his wife called me. She's like, oh, Lee, you know, something's happened. Um, let's just say his name was Kevin. She's like, Kevin just, he booked himself a retreat out in the mountains and he's just doing four or five hours of Qigong a day. I'm really concerned that he's just gone off the deep end. <laughs> and I was like, hey, don't worry. It's good. He's just going to dive into it. And then you're going to integrate. Then you're going to integrate it back into your life. And that's exactly what happened. But sometimes when you, when you don't believe so strongly and all of a sudden you have a, such a powerful internal experience that's undeniable, it's very transformative in your life. So, and now, uh, now he does about, you know, two hours a day and loves it and, you know, is in, integrated perfectly well into his career and his, and his role. So, yeah. Well, and, and certainly the people who, there are some other related questions, you know, Vanessa asks, can you have too much chi? And I know you, you kind of just answered that, but in the past, you've also talked about, uh, you know, early on in the practice, you know, potentially giving yourself a chi hangover. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's referred to as a yang over, too much yang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, I got a terrible yang over this morning. So then you just do a little detox. No, really, can you have too much chi? Now, in Chinese medicine, it's all about balance, right? So there is an idea of too much chi because, uh, and, and it also relates to what kind of chi are we talking about? For example, anger is too much chi. You have too much agitation in your system. Um, when you start to look at, uh, you know, positive energy, like, can I have too much inner peace? Can I have too much joy? And we, we often want balance. So we're thinking about excesses and deficiencies. And when you have context, that's why yin and yang always turn into each other. And this gives us back to how does energy work in life? Because there's the way we want energy to work and then there's the way we want life to go. And there's just the way life is. And we want to start to line ourselves up to the way life is so that we can be less resistant. And so Excess energy often is, it feels, can, can feel agitating. Um, and it really relates to our quality of energy. So quantity, how much energy do I have? And then what is the quality of that energy? And that's, those two things are very important. So we often want a lot of energy and we want a lot of good energy. And that's, that's the goal of our practice. Elevate energy, create it and make it smooth as it flows in our bodies. And then really adjust the quality of energy so that feels good and it's positive. That's great. That's great. Another question that has come up a couple of times uh, is um, like Teresa, for example, says, is it okay to do the AM routine twice in a row? So I get like 40 minutes all together. Oh yeah, that's great. I just have to show you guys this guy. He's now joined our conversation. Hey buddy. He's in deep meditation. Look at that. <laughs> My meditation partner. Ah, oh, so cute. He's fun. <laughs> so, yeah, you can do uh, just do it twice in a row. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Um, the AM routine, do it twice in the morning, or especially early in the day. 
only concern if you did the AM routine twice, let's say right before bed, the only concern would be you might be up, you know, and energized into the night. So if you have to study or if you have some work to get done, you can skillfully work with chi is like, oh man, I have to, I have a deadline tomorrow. I have paper to write. I'm finishing a project. I need a little energy. It's nine o'clock at night. Do the AM routine. You'll be good for another two hours. It's true that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, though, um, you do have sort of an arc to your practices of, you know, warm ups and stretches and movement and then kind of getting things rolling and then moving into the flows. So if you are stringing together two routines, then you're kind of doing that roller coaster twice. And so at that point, it might be a sign that you're ready for some longer routines. And we do yeah, right. longer stuff. Some of our healing series and learning series have like a 35, 40 minute routine in them. And then, of course, the the full hour in the subscription is available once you're uh, once you're ready for that. Yep. Oh, great. You have another one, Lee. Uh, I got a couple jumping out at me. Oh yeah. Oh, go ahead, Ben. Sure. Uh, somebody's asking about pregnancy. You've probably talked about it several times. They say, but she has missed it. I assume it's a she. Uh -huh. We have some words about it. Pregnancy, oh, what a wonderful life experience. Um, and there's different phases of pregnancy. So you have, you know, first trimester, second trimester, third trimester, and these are all very energetically different. Um, and yeah, so first trimester, often there's a lot of energy moving in the thrusting channel. So women will often feel nauseous, uh, emotional. There's a way in which the body's trying to clean out and create a vessel a pristine vessel for a new baby to grow. So the first month, the first few months, the first trimester is often detoxifying. And so you might not feel great because in detoxification, we don't feel great. We feel a lot better in toxifying, actually. You know, drinking some beer, wine, you know, the next day if you drink too much, your body detoxifies, we don't feel so good. So to, to create a vessel where your body is as pristine and clear as possible for new life to emerge, the body does some detoxification. And the thrusting channel is the, often the one that makes us feel a little nauseous or have morning sickness. And this is the part of the process where the body's cleansing or clearing. Some people even get this when they do Qigong and they're not pregnant. You just have this overactive, you start doing Qigong and flows and then people feel nauseous uh, and they're going, what the heck? This is supposed to make me feel good. It's your body cleansing and clearing, and it goes through a little process, and then you feel great. So the energy then becomes stronger. Your, your vessel is cleaner and clearer. So one of the things in the beginning parts of pregnancy, you can do some Qigong routines and some pressure points that help with calming down that, uh, that nausea or the stomach meridian um, and just helping your body to stay clean and clear getting extra rest and sleep, um, doing things that help you feel calm and balanced. Uh, all those kinds of things are great. I'd love to do a, a routine for the different trimesters. Um, first trimester being a little bit more uh, clen cleansing and detoxifying. Second trimester, you could do more work on the liver and the liver meridian, mm -hmm. helping our joints um, to stay flexible, keeping our bodies fit and doing healthy movements. And the third trimester, doing some routines that are really nourishing and relaxing and even showing people some pressure points when they go in labor, how to go into through labor uh, with less pain. So we can put that on the list. Good one. Yeah. I love that idea. Uh, Zach, do you have some brewing over there in the Facebook group that uh, we'd like to share? Yeah, we've got some coming through right now. I can, say some off for you Lee right here. Um, we have a question from Melinda. Is the tea you two are drinking caffeinated or not? Well, it is lightly caffeinated, but it's a very complex uh, profile, right? There's, there's a lot of different molecules besides caffeine in pu'er tea. And some of them are stimulating and some of them are relaxing. So when you blend it together, you get energy going up, but it's also calming and relaxing. And that's what makes where so nice where you don't get you know the caffeine elevation really strongly and then the caffeine crash it just it's a much smoother elevation and a much smoother descent from my yeah. from my understanding 
Pu Air is always great. And Nicole also has a question. I'm new to Qigong. What do I need to know? Oh, uh, what do you need to know? You need to, as you practice Qigong, what you need to know starts to emerge. And it's really interesting because in China, they don't tell you so much. And you just get this, you, you, you just keep practicing and then your body starts to wake up because a lot of wisdom and insights come from within. And we've been sort of taught that we need to be told everything and we, we discount our own intuitive inner wisdom. So Qigong helps us to bring that back online. So we start trusting in our own inner wisdom, but really, you know, the principles of practice relax first principle of Qigong practice. So number one, relax, relaxation leads to a flow. Now, another principle of practice is move from your center, because when you move from your center, it's not just a physical movement. It means move with all of yourself. You do Qigong not only for a healthy body, but also for healthy mood and healthy mind. So you're integrating these different energetic aspects of yourself. You're moving with all of yourself, an integrated whole. Um, the other thing is find ways to enjoy your body. So enjoyment is a principle. So when we're doing Qigong, at the end of our practice, we often feel way better. We feel this natural sense of bliss coming from the inside out. And these are things that help us to just, they're guidelines into our practice, they're principles that we use. And then what you need to know will be an evolving journey. But what you need to know today will be different tomorrow and different the next day. And it's quite an exciting adventure, you know, listening to our inner wisdom and knowledge as we do our practice. Yeah, definitely. That's always great. Nadia has a question for us. I'm doing a one hour class each morning. Is it a good time to do healing sounds, the 40 minute standing practice or in the evening would be better? So healing sounds is one of those practices that help the body to detoxify, it cleanses and clears the system in the body. So often the healing sounds are done at the end of the day as a way to clear whatever stress that you've brought in. That being said, we often wake up in the morning and we got a lot of stress on our minds already, thinking about what we have to do during the day, or we just wake up. Stress is so constant that we then just be becomes our natural state, that we wake up stressed out. We don't know how to turn off the stress response. So it's great anytime we want to calm and clear our stress. Um, you can do it. Healing sounds are done periodically through the day, like morning and evening, especially when you are working on any healing in your body. So you're going to do more healing sounds if you have health challenges, especially severe health challenges. You're going to want to do healing sounds. The prescription is twice a day for an hour. For example, anybody with like a cancer diagnosis or more serious health issues. I find the healing sounds wonderful to do in the evening as prevention, but Try them during the day. It's, it's wonderful as well. Yeah, for anybody interested in checking it out, I also just shared a link in the chat for the Healing Sounds program. Oh, but, wonderful. But we have a special on it today or in these next 12 days. If... <laughs> oh, no, Lee. That was yesterday. Everybody missed it. Oh, darn. <laughs> see, see why I don't do marketing for us? <laughs> just stick with answering the Qigong questions. Yeah. Well, lucky for you, we've got a ton over here. Leslie Dworkin from Jason, Ohio is asking, in doing the microcosmic orbit, where exactly does the energy flow along the spine? Oh, great. Microcosmic orbit is a practice where you are circulating energy within your body. And the nice thing is we're going to do a, a three-hour workshop at some point on this in the, in the, next, in the near future. Um, now, the meridian that goes up the back is called the Du Meridian, D-U, which means governing channel. And think of these meridians like rivers. So there's the surface of the river and there's the depth of the river. And some rivers are deeper than others. And some points along the rivers are deeper than other points. So the meridian that goes along the spine is on the surface and it's also in the depth. So just imagine when you're feeling the energy in the microcosmic orbit in the back, see where you feel it, put your mind and your attention there, and it's on the surface and it goes all the way in into the spine and then all the way up to the brain. So put your attention there, see where you feel it, see if you can feel the surface of it, see if you feel the depth, see what points along the microcosmic orbit stand out, 
And then, like I said, we'll, we'll go into this practice in detail in our workshop because it is one of those really rich and powerful energetic experiences. And it was often the microcosmic orbit was held in secret because it was empowering to individuals. You get sort of this direct connection to the universe and start to feel your place and purpose in life. And it is in extremely empowering. So that's that practice. And I, I just love it so much. And I'm excited to teach it in detail coming up. Yeah, everyone's super excited for that workshop. We now have a question from Maureen. Do you have a practice to prevent radiation and people who are sensitive to EMF? Yeah, you know, so what in Chinese medicine, we have, you know, pathogenic qi. And we're talking a lot about pathogenic qi right now in the world around us with this virus. But um, some people are very sensitive to Wi-Fi and all the electromagnetic pollution that goes on around us. Um, unfortunately, it's very pervasive. We can't necessarily do anything about it. I mean, you can, you can, you can really help by turning off your cell phone um, during the day, not sleeping with it near, near your bed, um, turning a Wi-Fi off at periodic times, you know, just do what you can in your own home. Um, and then really, it's about strengthening your inner energy, creating some protective energy by expanding your chi and creating this nice field of energy, which is called Wei Chi, which means protective energy. And when you have a strong Wei Chi, it's like having a strong immune system against those EMFs, against even other people's negative energy. You just have a much stronger energy field that pushes that protective field further out. So that's often the goal of our practice. And in the subscription, I often talk about about that, that protective energy. So anything that's building your immune system or your emotional immune system will help with EMFs as well. Um, this point here, pericardium six, you can just massage it. And that is a good point for emotional balance and emotional protection, but it also is good for that EMF protection. Yeah, that's great. So Michelle has a question for us now. Lee, do you like practicing indoors or outside better? I love doing Qigong when you're outdoors. You're always in such great locations. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love doing Qigong outside. You know, in an ideal world, you're doing Qigong outside. It's about 70 degrees, nice light breeze. The whales are breaching in the background, things like that. But we can't always find those ideal circumstances. So they say nature's energy is big bigger than our energy. So if there's an extreme weather condition and you're a person that is a little bit more on the depleted energy side, doing Qigong out in the wind is, can be disruptive. So be careful doing Qigong out in the wind, especially if we're not um, clothed properly. You don't have a windbreaker or warm clothes. Um, that being said, you know, Qigong out in nature is wonderful out with the trees or the ocean, things like that. Um, if you can find those places. Otherwise, it's wonderful to do Qigong inside. Um, anywhere you can take some time to be with yourself and your own internal energy is a wonderful practice. And don't feel like you have to create the exact right conditions and circumstances to do some Qigong practice. Stand up from your computer, do a few minutes, do 15, 20 minutes in your home, do it in a, you know, in a bathroom stall if, at, at work if you have to but keep your body moving, keep your chi circulating. It's gonna do you some, some wonderful benefits. All right, Mr. Holden, let's take, some, uh, let's take some live folks. Okay. Now I know we've had, uh, some folks had their hands up for the very, very long time. So I apologize uh, if I'm lowering your hand right now, but what we're gonna do is lower everybody's hands and uh, see which, I know the few people who have their hands up now, so I've just lowered all your hands, and if you want to talk to us, raise it again, and that way we'll avoid. I know at least two or three of the people who have their hands up are no longer even on the on the call, so that's why we're doing this. Apologize for the inconvenience, and uh, okay, great. We have some folks re-raising their hands, so we'll let them go first. Uh, first up is Angela, and uh, Angela is coming back in right now. Hi, Angela. We can hear you. Hi. And we can see you. 
Um, I have a question about the jaw. So for years, I've clenched my teeth at night when I sleep. I have TMJ, headaches. I mean, it was very severe. Then they said it's fibro. Some say it's because you can't breathe, have nasal surgery. Some say your teeth aren't aligned. Others say it's anxiety and stress. You, whatever specialist you go to, you get their explanation. Yeah, right. Um, I was curious with the Qigong, um, since I'm starting to use it in the last couple of months, taking a few online training courses and then following your videos. Um, yeah. And it seems to help, but at night when I'm asleep, and the body does what it wants is there something more that i could be doing to help um, relieve this bad habit <laughs> yeah you yeah, have great great question so now you come to the qigong teacher you're going to get a qigong answer yes. so so <laughs> what we can control like you know often we can't control the alignment of our teeth unless we do something quite profound or nasal surgery all that i would always do the most natural thing possible first and you are going to get benefit in so many things if you lower stress, release tension in your body. So the body unconsciously is trying to disperse stress, internalize stress. And it often does that while we're sleeping. So how does it do it? It can do it through dreams. It can do it through breathing. It can do it through just muscular contraction. So I would say before you go to sleep, do the healing sounds. You know, right before going to sleep, do three of each of the healing sounds. This will work wonders and you are looking at the root cause as we look at qigong practice what is the root cause of that issue and if we can clear the stress and and you feel good in your body and it's still happening then we start going into more conventional methods but hopefully by clearing stress and doing some energy practices what you realize is that your body is an intelligent system that it, these manifestations always are happening for a reason there's a good reason why your body's trying to disperse the stress inside and just squeeze the teeth. It's probably saying, hey, we need a little bit more cleansing and clearing or protective energy. So I would say healing sounds and some flows in the evening would be great. Then you, these pressure points right here on the jaw, stomach seven, these are the strongest muscles in your body. Pound for pound, these muscles are really strong. So often stress will manifest through here and in your neck and shoulders. So massage with circles, everybody can try this. It's good for almost everything. If you press in and find a tender spot, press in and then make little circles there, it is sore. Can you feel that? Yeah. Search yeah. around, press with firm pressure into the soreness and circle. Okay. Okay. And then healing sounds before bed, these pressure points. And there is a special healing sound for jaw tension. You guys want to know what it is? Yes. Oh, okay. If you said yah, that was the right answer because that is the healing sound. You do like this. You go, yah, yah, and you move your jaw back and forth. Yah, 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 yah. And that yah sound vibrates in the joint um, and clears tension here in the, in the jaw. So do that sound. You could do that sound before bed unless you have a partner sleeping next to you in which you do the sound and they send you a lot of negative energy. <laughs> then you have to do more qigong. Don't do that. So, Don't yeah, 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 that sound <laughs> plus other healing sounds for the organs would be great. Okay. All right. Let us know how it works. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. Yeah. Fantastic. 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 <laughs> next up, we <laughs> have. Athlete. Yeah. And next up, we have Emmanuel. And Emmanuel will be popping up in just a split second here. Here comes Emmanuel. Okay. All right, you're unmuted and uh, hopefully we can see you too. Hi, Emmanuel. Hi, Lee. Hey, how are you? I'm doing good, just uh, uh, having some oolong tea and uh, I was uh, reviewing uh, my old notes and I came across uh, a question and it kind of ties into what you were talking about earlier about the elements and uh, how um, skillful we are at obtaining the chi energy. And uh, the question that I wrote down was, what are we lacking? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was wondering um, a good way to diagnose lack. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I think lack is often, <clears throat> it's an interesting word because we're really lacking nothing. Everything's already here. It's just that we get cut off from our source of energy and uh, 
when we let go of the unnecessary, what emerges is our, our essence. And so sometimes it's that we've acquired too much of society energy, and then it feels, we're always perpetually feeling like we have lack because that's just the way society works. If we feel lack, we wanna get all the stuff from outside of us. And when we tune in and relax and we let go of what's no longer necessary, what emerges is something amazing. Um, it, it's the idea of, you know, somebody asked Michelangelo how he makes the perfect statue, right? And he said, what it really is, it's it just taking away the unnecessary rock and then emerges this perfection of the statue. And so letting go of the unnecessary till we feel our sense of wholeness within, then that's the magic. So now we could get a little bit more technical, like what are we lacking? We could be talking about deficiencies of energy. So often we are feeling deficient. We don't feel like we have enough energy. When you don't feel like you have enough energy, how does life feel? Life feels overwhelming. We don't have enough energy to deal with life's demands, so then we get stressed out. If we get too stressed out, too overwhelmed, we get depressed. Um, and so these emotional energies that follow when we feel lack or depleted um, can follow too. But really it's about letting go of the stress, letting go of the unnecessary, and then your natural wisdom and energy starts to emerge. And it's about remembering who we are at our essence and that we are a microcosm of the macrocosm and there really isn't anything lacking in the universe you know nature is full of so much energy and that when we let go relax we start to receive it more and we receive the right kind of energy so it's a little bit of an esoteric answer but i feel like the question was open-ended so i i wanted to bring that up because i think it's often a misperception of and, and then reorienting our perception in our mind gives us access to more power. Awesome. So you would, you would say that uh, to first uh, connect to source and uh, maybe not uh, intellectualize, but connect more with uh, clarifying our perception. Yeah, in a bigger picture. And then you can also just, I mean, just come down to the, the basics of it. Like, what am I lacking in my life? What, are, what really fills me up and how can I get more of that? Like if it's spending time with good friends or if it's, uh, you know, doing particular activities, sometimes that we feel a lack when we don't get enough, you know, let's say, you know, somebody loves dancing and they're not dancing enough or somebody loves, you know, surfing and they're not surfing enough. So then we feel a particular lack in those things that bring us joy. So, so there's some very practical things and how do we reorient our life and our priorities, but in a larger picture that we, we really have a lot within ourselves and that when we let go of the unnecessary, what emerges is a fullness of who we are. Great. Thank you so much, Lee. I, I'm totally enjoying uh, the tease with Lee. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Cheers. Nice to see you back here again, Emmanuel. Good to see you. All right. Next up, we have Damian Pitt. And uh, Damian is gonna be here in any second. And here he comes. Can you I hear me? You. We can hear you. Oh, great. I don't know about my video, but there we are. Um, Lee, uh, but firstly, I discovered you through Yoga Glow after having an accident. I was doing other things on there and then took up Tao Yin because it was considerably less stressful on you know than traditional yoga and i've come a long way since i got uh, injured so it's really been a very special discovery so i want to say thank you um i've got two questions firstly i've got a metal bar in my right arm how if any if any any way does that affect the flow of chi through my body yeah wow you gotta you got that bionic arm huh so, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, energy moves through, let's, let's think of the analogy of water. So when we have water moving through us, we might have an obstruction. Yeah. And so some injuries and scar tissues and surgeries, it's a little bit like, um, you know, a boulder in a river. What does the water do? It starts to flow around it. Mm -hmm. And so the water and the energy will find its way. And what we want to do is kind of free up the tension around there. Um, but it's not to worry about because the energy will find its way through 
especially when we relax and do what we can, right? Yeah, cool. so I don't, I don't feel anything in particular because of it. You know, it's almost as if it's not there, but I just, yeah. you know, it's always yeah. intriguing. That's great. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Um, the, yeah, the other question is, uh, I've been a primary school teacher for the best part of the last decade. Got a um, post-viral fatigue three years ago, so I've been out of the game. Uh -huh. and, um, anyway, I'm a teacher at heart. And I spent a lot of time trying to recover, and Qigong's become part of that recovery for me and Dao Yin, and I, I often interchange the two. I don't really know what, what Dao Yin is and, and what Qigong isn't and vice versa. Right, right. I don't know if you could explain that. That's not really the, sorry, that's not really the question I had in mind, but um, the question I had in mind was about teaching. And, um, and the course that you offer, I don't know if you've spoken about that on, in, in the team meetings yet, but I'm, I'm really interested, yeah. Fantastic. That's great. I mean, I think the teacher training that we put together online, I'm really proud of that program because we put a lot of energy into filming, recording, editing, creating the workbooks and the, and the accompanying programs and the, and the Zoom calls with our teacher trainer, trainers a couple of times a month. So it's a, fan, it's a really fantastic educational piece. Um, and it even supports coming to Santa Cruz live or wherever I'm teaching live. Um, yeah. as an educational piece. So you could do both, but I love that teacher training. People are getting a lot out of it. You get, um, you know, it's a really great way to submerge yourself into the training experience and take your practice to the next level. It's really the best yeah. way to enhance your own practice and then start to bring it out into the world however you want, whether it's one-on-one -on -one and family and friends, teaching in yeah. a, at a group, teaching kids, hospitals, whatever you want to do, we start to help you, um, bring it out into the world in that way. Is, is Holden Qigong in, in the EU much already? Um, yeah, we are definitely, we have people in Europe for sure. Yeah. yeah. Quite a few people teaching our practices in Europe and I would love to come to Europe and teach more. So yeah. um, that's something in my mind. Um, yeah, one so day, cool. All right, man. This, when this is all said and done, let's, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. And, and Damien, you know, yeah, if, you yeah. do want to, if you do want to join in, um, you are definitely in the early wave. We do have a number of people, but it, I'd say in the EU, as far as certified teachers, it's in the dozens, not the hundred. Okay, so, yeah. By okay. all means, it isn't, you know, it's still early days for us getting this out there in that kind of scale. Yeah, I've, I've just moved to Hamburg. Oh. And oh. I'm, yeah, I'm in travel. I wonder about combining it with English language teaching, which I've done before. It's a great idea. Obviously, yeah, I mean, I, I'm learning German as I go. Um, yeah. But yeah, combining, yeah, teaching Qigong with English language learning kind of seems like maybe an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. it's great because then you get you get people in their bodies, they're less stressed, and you're gonna you're gonna learn faster. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, food for thought. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Damien. Well, and while we're uh, shuffling attendees here, I'll, I'll just reinforce what you said, Lee, about it, deepening your own practice because that's why I got into the teacher trainings back before we had an online available one. And as I started to understand deeply these five elements principles and the principles of Qigong practice and the principles of the meditations and how these things fit together, I really, uh, really got lit up about it. And that's what inspired me to want to teach and then ultimately to, to start this business with you. So I didn't intend to do a teacher training. I just wanted to go a deep dive and deepen my own practice and, um, Anybody whose goal is that, it's also the best way to do that. You don't have to go through the certification process if you don't want to, but you might find halfway through, you're like, ah, I'm kind of inspired to share this with people. So uh, maybe I'll go through the certification process because that's a common occurrence. So um, next up, Steve Newell. Steve is going to be here any second. Steve is not here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up is Jenny. Jenny is here. Nope. Steve Newell's here now. Hi, Steve. Hey. Steve, you uh, almost missed it, but you get to go first. Jenny's here too. <laughs> All right. Well, hello. Hi, Steve. Um, how do I turn my picture on? Bottom left. There should be a little video camera. Start video left okay, let's try that. There we go. perfect i'm a person with Parsons, Lee. hey steve nice to see you 
it's good to see you too. And it's always good to see you in person, but it's, I mostly see you online. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. That's good. What's happened for me is uh, about a year and a half ago, I took up Qigong to see if I could maintain an independent lifestyle. I still live by myself. And at this point, without help, but because of Qigong, basically. And um, your recent 30-day challenge, of those seven-minute routines that you do are wonderful, mainly because I'm real connected with the places that you filmed them at. I've been wandering those North Coast beaches for about 40 years now. And Greyhound Rock and Scotts Creek and those places where you filmed those, Real familiar places for me. I can go and stand in those same spots. So it, may, it, it makes a big difference for how I can hook in there. And they've been a real uh, um, a resurgence in my practice. Um, I fell recently and was unable to practice for quite a while. And now I'm getting back into it. And it helps me more than anything that I know of with the Parkinson's than anything, to not just the Qigong, ch traditional Chinese medicine, basically. All the various aspects of it, from massage to nutrition to needles to Qigong. To, but um, it, um, it helps me out, and I appreciate it. And thank you so much for all that you've brought to me that, that way. Oh, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think Qigong is just, it's really helpful from wherever we're at, with what we're dealing with. We're all dealing with life challenges and Parkinson's is a really, really challenging um, diagnosis and illness. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing you for acupuncture and Qigong and it's, you're just uh, an inspiration and really um, what you're accomplishing and what you're doing is, is wonderful. And it's, it's showcasing what can be done with Qigong practice, with the consistent practice and how, how helpful it is on so many different layers and levels. So thanks, Steve. Thank you. And especially for this stuff you've been doing since this virus stuff has been happening. You've been yeah. a, real, a real light for me. Um, all that fear and uncertainty out there, you're a good antidote for that. And Thank I really you. appreciate you making yourself available this way. Thank you. Appreciate that. As do I. Wow. Thanks, Steve, for coming on. That's, that's quite moving. And I appreciate your... Uh, I appreciate your appreciation. We're, we're so glad that we can do this with all of you in the community. And, and so when yeah, I was real pleased to, to find, see who you were, because when I first met with Lee, I, I knew that he had this whole online thing, but from talking to him and being with him, I also knew that he was not a technical person. <laughs> and I was like, how's he doing that? And I decided he must have a partner. And sure enough, he does. And thank you as well. My you're, pleasure, Steve. You're getting it out a lot further than than it would ordinarily go. Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on today and uh, keep up the good work. And I don't know, I'm hoping that you can still sneak down to Scott Creek from time to time. And <laughs> since you're in some of those less city-oriented beaches, maybe you can find your way down to a secluded spot. Then if I, yeah, I've been sneaking around these woods for quite a while and there's definitely places you can go. Awesome, awesome. Thanks again. Thank you. Jenny is here. Hello. Jen Hi, Jenny. We can hear you. Hello, Lee and Ben. Hello. I just want to say thank you so much, Lee, for producing and putting everything on, on the um, email because it's been so special for me. I'm 81 and I'm still doing your exercises. I've been doing them for about a year. Um, I live in Cape Town in South Africa, so I can't always, unfortunately, pay what you, what you need because our rate of exchange is always very high. But I just want to say how much it's helped me so much, and especially as I'm getting older now, I can still move. And, mm. you know, that for me is a really big thing. Brain-wise, I hope I'm okay. It's just body-wise, <laughs> not, not always so good. Mm. But I just want to say thank you so much. Um, I appreciate really what you do. Um, I can't always join. I try and join when I can, but I, at, the mo at the moment, definitely we can't. It's like $20 is a 
20 rand is one dollar at the moment oh. so we're having a bit of a problem but i just wanted to say thank you because you've kept me well and fit and happy and especially at this time because it's not it's not an easy time but anyway we're surviving and everything is fine so i just wanted to say thank you thank you thank you Wow, oh, my pleasure thanks thank you and i think that's the thing with qigong is we want to be able to age gracefully keep our bodies moving to stay healthy as we can um i think aging we have a lot of fear around it and um, because we're taught that as we age all these problems start arising and um but there's a lot we can do there's you know simple movements and flows and breathing and keeping our energy circulating can do wonders uh wonders for our health and longevity so thanks for well, being thank an example of that and and also from a spiritual point of view you know it, it it's made a big difference as well because i followed that uh, yeah. as well yeah, absolutely and actually this aging is not so bad i you know everybody said oh so bad but i haven't found it that bad and i again i say thanks thanks to you for that you're welcome thank you terrific i wish everybody very well over all the problems we're going through and i'm sure that it'll come we'll all come out better on the other side yes exactly cheers jenny really appreciate that we thank are you. also confident this will all come out better on the other side it's just a matter of when and and how exactly um okay well that is a fantastic testimony to the power of qigong yeah uh i think uh, we're running a little time, time. Huh? yeah so um do you have any closing thoughts or well i just think uh thanks guys for everybody joining us and being part of this you know this continued conversation over tea and how we can support each other and really tune into the energy that we want to put out into the world by getting together like this and creating a different conversation conversations on on shifting the paradigm uh you know extracting the lessons that we might need from the circumstances and looking for energy from the inside out and um yeah just blessings my best uh, heartfelt compassion to all of you all and uh let's do it again soon here, here. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and we'll see you for the next one.